Good afternoon, all. This pretrial review is in the matter of CFI 045-2023 and is being held by way of video conference before Justice Andrew Moran, with the sitting of the hearing taking place in Dubai. Any orders or directions made during the course or after this hearing will be issued by the registry in Dubai on the judge's instructions. The claimant is represented by Hamdan al-Shamsi Lawyers and Legal Consultants. Lead counsel is Mr. Robert Whitehead. The defendants are represented by Kochar & Co. Legal Consultants. Lead counsel is Mrs. Tamim Hashmi. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Uh, well, good afternoon. And we'll begin, first of all, um, by uh, me asking you, Ms. Hashmi, uh, now you're here, why you haven't filed a pre-trial checklist. Uh, Your Honor, there is a uh, because uh, I was waiting for another as directed by this honorable court. So I was waiting for uh, further uh, report from our expert. So still I'm waiting for that report. So that's why I was wanted to even include that one in my pre-trial checklist. So that's the reason, Your Honor. Well, I, I, you say you're waiting for a further report. I have read the expert's joint report. Expert's so, joint report, but uh, Your Honor, there is a, you know, alternatively, Your Honor, registry asked us to even provide the alternative details of the shares. So for that, I have directed expert to prepare accordingly, Your Honor. So still both claimant is also not providing that alternative re report and from like uh, even my expert claimant, like defendant expert is also not. We well, are waiting for that. Well, that's no excuse, Miss Hashmi. Uh, rule twenty six point seven five uh, requires you to do a number of things, uh, including um, <clears throat> filing a pre-trial checklist, um, and you're supposed to agree a timetable for the trial. Uh, you're supposed to consult. I've not seen any timetable. Um, claimant is to file the draft timetable after discussion at least two days before the date fixed for the pre-trial review and differences of view should be clearly identified. At the pre-trial review, the judge may set a timetable for the trial and give such other directions as he considers appropriate. Well, I'm in no position to do that uh, because you haven't filed your checklist. And you're telling me now um, a spurious reason, frankly, why you have not. I don't accept it. Um, it's not an excuse. So what is it you're saying about expert evidence? Uh, I'll, I'll ask you first, then I'll ask Mr. Whitehead. What expert evidence is outstanding? This is very, very late in the day and completely contrary to previous directions for you to be filing expert evidence. Well, what is it? Your, Your Honor, I have received the email from the registry asking us to prepare the valuation report for business and shares on the alternative basis, Your Honor. Yes, so, well, that was, I gave that direction a long time ago. Um, and there was a there was a dispute uh, between the experts, or there was, shall we say, a disagreement as to uh, whether uh, the experts should give their opinion um, on the value of the business as it stands at the present time. And I, di I directed that they should. And I've seen, as I say, a joint report in which um, they do give a value of the business, uh, in one case that it's worth nothing, and in the other case that it's worth goodwill of 500,000 dirhams. And that's where we stand with expert evidence. So what reports are we waiting for? Your Honor, right now, position, defendant uh, coins restaurant position has already been changed, Your Honor. And uh, uh, DFC courts closed this coin restaurant. So this coin restaurant is not, doesn't exist at all. And uh, as far as uh, partners, 
She well, that's, a not, that's, that's another matter. I, I'm going to ask Mr. Whitehead about that, what the purpose of this litigation is in the circumstances as they now exist. Uh, but you're saying that you received an email from the courts um, and on the basis of that, you are seeking a further expert's report. So um, I, I will ask Ms. Alshamsi in a moment to um, find me that email and send it to me. I know I gave directions by an email that should have been conveyed, uh, but that was not to prepare further reports. Yeah. That was really to require, uh, as I recall, the claimant's expert to value the business as it stood at the moment. I have to have that information. Um, and I don't know whether that has been done or not. I'll ask Mr. Whitehead in a moment. But so far as you're concerned, you're under the imp you've given instructions to an expert to prepare a further report. Is that the case? Please, Your Honor. Right. And when is that report due to be produced? Uh, he is asking for the one one week time because I have already conveyed that this pre-trial review is to be held on today. So he is in process, Your Honor, because right. we cannot access we cannot access Coin Restaurant now because keys are with DFC codes and we cannot access any record now. So we what we will prepare as per bank balance sheet your honor and uh, as far and further i would like to make request there was one swapping machine belongs to the claimant and that he was using there unauthorizedly so that swapping machine i, I, I don't want to i don't want to go into that i know that is an issue um between the parties about the conduct of the business when the business was operating that's a matter uh, that may be relevant in the trial. I'm not saying what is and isn't relevant in this conversation. I want to know uh, so that, how the trial is uh, going to take place, um, what is going to happen in the trial, what the timetable is, what witnesses are going to be called, and so forth. So I'll come back to you, Ms. Hashmi, to, to uh, deal with your expert. You've told me what the position is at the moment, that you're... He's wanting another week to produce this report that you've requested. Uh, so I'm going to turn to Mr. Whitehead and yeah. ask you, Mr. Whitehead, what 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 um, what's your position on expert evidence? So, yeah, our position, uh, Your Honour, is quite right. What you've said that expert evidence has uh, taken place in the case. There's been a joint report, and there's no directions or no permission given by the court as far as we understand for further reports uh, yeah. specifically from the um, defendant's side so it does come as a bit of a surprise uh, to me uh, that that this has been put forward by the defendant's counsel uh, and to me as well so I'm going to ask Ms Al Shamsi um, I'm going to try and find the direction that I sent uh, in my emails just give me a second um, uh, Ms. Al Shamsi, um, would you have to hand the, the um, direction that you issued after I um, <clears throat> just looking you, for it now? After, are, yeah, if it helps, I think we the email is the fifteenth of October, which was sent by Lena. Uh, from the court where it references the judge has directed the parties with the following. That's the one I want. Just read yes. that to me, if you will. Read that yes. to me. No, so, no, Mr. Whitehead, you read it to me. Yeah, so it says the court directs that documents relating to recent events concerning the business should be included in the hearing bundle. Likewise, the expert should assess the value of the business and its shares on the alternative basis as uh, of its value with, without regard to recent events as a going concern and in the alternative in light of recent events the defendant seek to rely on affecting value it is for the court to decide um, the relevant and appropriate dates and circumstances for valuation and the value of the business on the shares at that date now um, as i understood it 
that was generated as a result of a dispute or disagreement between the experts uh, which arose at the point of their experts meeting and discussion yes and that at that meeting um your expert would not at that time the claimant's expert would not did not think it was appropriate for him to value the business um, as things stood and I directed to the contrary and, uh, uh, and that yeah. was to be the discussion between the experts it wasn't um, intended to be uh, a warrant or a permission for the filing of further expert reports um, and I understood the defendant's position to be that the business is completely defunct. It has no business. The premises uh, have been seized. The, business, the company is insolvent. It does not have a license to trade and therefore it is worthless. That I understand to be the defendant's expert's position in a nutshell. Is that right, Ms. Tamshi? Yes, Your Honour. Right. Well, I, do, I don't need a further report for that because I know that's what your expert is saying. And um, as I understand it, Mr. Whitehead, the minute of the experts meeting and disagreement that I now have um, provides your expert's view of what the business is worth by reason of its goodwill value, is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. Yeah, and that is that's that is the expert issue in play uh, between um, the parties that I yes. have to determine. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And Ms. Hashmi, that is right from your point of view? Your Honour, what the goodwill? Goodwill is no more there. Yeah, no, I well understand that. Your expert has made that quite plain in the minute of the meeting. He says there's, there's no value in the goodwill. Uh, and Mr. Whitehead's expert says there is value in the goodwill. And that's what I've got to determine when I hear these two experts. I was not, I was not, your honor's hands. I was not giving permission and my direction cannot be construed as giving permission for any further expert reports. I was giving a direction for the experts to engage at their joint meeting and let me know what their position was, let each other know what their position was, discuss it. They've discussed it and now I have a minute. Um, I'm not sure, just let me get the, the, the date of that minute. It's quite recent, isn't it, Mr. Whitehead? You will have it to hand, I'm sure. Yeah, let me just check. The um, new case management system logs one out after half an hour, which is a matter I've taken up yes. we, with the authorities. We've had, we've had a similar. Uh, <laughs> uh, it yeah. is not long enough because we often um, are diverted for more than half an hour. Then I have to go back into it, open up every case, get to the documents again. Yes. Um, and here we are. This will not do. So just give me one second while I open up the case again. Yeah. And I will go to the case bundle. We're also trying to find this, uh, John. Right, don't worry, we'll get there between us, I'm sure. Alia, you're listening to this. Can you please convey this illustration to the um, IT team of delay being occasioned because we are cut off from access to the um, the documents and so on. <clears throat> yes, of course, Your Honor. Thank you. Joint memorandum. I have it now.
Oh, that's not very helpful, is it? I can't see it. Oh, 26th of September. Yes. So that's, that is actually before I gave the direction. Is that right? Yeah. What was the date of the direction you just read to me? Um, sorry, Anna, just give me one second. I'll get the email back up. Sorry, two seconds. We're also uh, going between screens as well. The direction is dated 15th of October. Right. Okay. Well, yes, this was this was before, but this this seems to be the case that your expert is considering the current situation, Mr. Whitehead. Is that right, or so, uh, no, Your Honour? I think the 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 position for our expert for the purpose of this pre-trial review was just to confirm that we had an individual who was able to attend for the trial itself because the individual who produced the report is no longer available. Ah, um, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I remember that now and it, that is in your pre-trial checklist. Yeah. So is it is it the position then that you also are waiting for an expert to um, provide um, an opinion on what the value of the business is in present circumstances? No, you are. I, I, as far as we understood, there was no direction from the court to do that. If we, well, yes, if we need... yes, there is. You've just read it. Your so, expert, your expert is to give a valuation and discuss it with his fellow expert. Yeah. On the value of the business as it stands in the circumstances that presently exist. This, yeah. is, a this is a business with no premises. Yes. It's, in it's insolvent, as I understand it. Uh, it has no uh, trading license. Mm. And uh, it has no uh, prospects on either party's case of being restored into the premises that are no longer available to it, into yes. operation because the license has been taken away from it, yeah. and uh, as it's trading. And I have directed that your expert should tell me what the, what the um, and should discuss with his opposing expert what the value of the business is in those circumstances. Yeah, okay. Uh, let just, get, uh, just bear with me one second, uh, Your Honour. So we will, we, we you're quite right, Your Honour, we take that and we will, we will address that. We'll make sure that's carried out uh, immediately. Right. So the position is you are both waiting. Miss, Miss Hashmi is absolutely right. Um, you're, she hasn't got the evidence either. Um, and you are waiting for somebody to come to life to give evidence as an expert on yes. your behalf. That's correct, yes. That's not a very satisfactory state of affairs, is it? Just shortly before the trial, as we are. Your Honour, the, there is one point, I think, which is very important, um, and it is in our pre-trial checklist we address. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to address is that the, the main witness and the person who's also named in the proceedings, um, which is Mr. Shahab uh, al Shepi, excuse my pronunciation. Yes. As far as we understand, he he won't be available to attend the trial. What um, is? I mean, Miss Hashmi might be able to uh, elaborate more on this, but our instructions are that there's um, a writ of summons that has ordered Mr. Al uh, Shehi to be summoned to the Ministry of Interior for payment of of an amount, and that he's he's no he isn't he he might not be available. But I'm sure Ms. Hashmi will be able to uh, elaborate more on this. Well, I, I was going to ask you about that, but that's really a separate separate issue. I've got mm. questions to ask you both about the um, roster of witnesses that you you intend to call 
because yeah. I'm, con I'm confused by that as well. But let's just concentrate on the expert evidence, first of all. Um, I have given that direction, um, and I understood it was required in circumstances where the experts had engaged, as directed, to discuss the valuation of the business, and that the defendant's expert was saying, in the circumstances, I value the business at nil, yeah. that presently exists, and that uh, when um, he sought that your expert should opine on the value of the business in present circumstances, um, he declined to do so. Uh, and that was why I issued that direction, which Miss Hashmi now understandably, I understand why she's done it, she understood that in the circumstances which are now clearer to me as meaning that um, not only your expert, but her expert as well, were to give reports on what the value of the business is in, its pres in the present circumstances. Um, and certainly that is something I need to know uh, well. because the relief you're seeking is one of the reliefs you're seeking is for an order that Mr. Shahab um, purchase your client's shares in the business at whatever value the business has. Um, and that value, that relevant value, is at the date of the court's order. It's yes, not at some, think, not yeah, at some earlier date. That's, I think that you're absolutely correct. Um, mm. I think what has slightly dislodged or more than slightly dislodged mm. this whole case mm. is this um this order which is made by the sct court in an alternative case mm. um and then it's it's resulting in a, a quite frankly a somewhat haphazard um set of affairs now uh mm. the claimants council has been attempting to contact miss um hashmi uh, yeah. to discuss this because we don't want to waste court time or, mm -hmm. or resources. It's quite clear that events have changed um, significantly. Uh, but unfortunately, Ms. Hashmi, we, there's been a huge delay. One, my uh, junior, Mr. Jude, uh, paralegal in our team, uh, I understand has been calling Ms. Hashmi to try and resolve this before the hearing in December. But this, it's it's fallen on deaf ears as, as far as I'm aware. Miss Miss Hashmi, I'm sure will will be able to provide her position. But the reality is that things have changed significantly since we first commenced the case back in, I think it was August uh, 2023. Yes, well, that's quite plain, um, Miss Miss Hashmi. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to go into attempts to contact you. The fact is, I'm going to direct that you confer about this um, face to face with them. Um, Your uh, Honor, he's talking about the letter. So, which I have. No, Miss Hashmi, sorry, I must interject. Miss Hashmi, don't, 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 speak, don't speak over each other. I'll let you come back, Mr. Yeah, Whitehead. You, Ms. Hashmi, Your Honor, Ms. Hashmi, it, you... sorry, it is important this because I think Miss Hashmi is referring to without prejudice letter. I didn't right. refer to that letter. So, no, I, no, I was. You I mustn't refer. Interject, but you're on right. this occasion, yeah. No, you're right to interject. Uh, absolute right to speak over Miss Hashmi. Miss Hashmi, do not refer to without prejudice correspondence under any circumstances. Um, but Mr. Whitehead, you you impressed me with your frankness on the last occasion that we met. You may recall I commented upon it, and equally again today, because the reality is that um, you're seeking relief in relation to a company which no longer exists. It ought to be wound up. And, and that, that you, it, you know, I, I'm not making any judgments, but on the basis of what you both told me at the moment, um, the court could intervene of its own motion to wind the company up. Yes. Um, 
it's it it's uh, it is a most unsatisfactory state of affairs and it it's improper completely contrary to the overriding objective again as you frankly accepted mr yes. whitehead yeah to waste the court's time with a claim that is uh, utterly pointless yes so um I, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make a proposal, but before I, as to how you're going to discuss this, but I would just remind you that I do have the power to direct that you engage in ADR yes. um, in relation to this matter. Uh, and I can do that on urgent terms i can do it on any terms that i consider to be appropriate in pursuit of the overriding objective um but it seems utterly pointless to proceed with this pre-trial review in circumstances where without making any decisions without prejudging anything the reality is you both recognize uh that um there is very serious doubt about the utility of continuing with these proceedings uh, in, if, in any respect. Um, and we've got, as you said, Mr. Uh, Whitehead, we've got the SCT proceedings by the landlord, which are, as I understand it, completely over finished, and that's the end of it. Yes. so far as the company is concerned you've also put something in here I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss to understand why this is in your um pre-trial checklist you you've also included something about mr al shahi um being subject to a judgment of a very substantial sum eight hundred and twenty eight thousand five hundred and twenty five uh dirhams uh on a dishonored check and that he has been summoned uh, before the ministry, did you say? Yeah, Your Honour, our instructions are that this, and the, the reason we've included this is so that the court, we don't have, again, in, in accordance with the overriding objective, we don't get to court, this is obviously the pre-trial review, we don't attend court on the first day, and then Mr uh, al Shehi isn't available. Um, yeah. for for whatever reason um and you know again miss tamim i'm sure will be able to uh, elaborate further but as far as we understand there, there might be a serious doubt about his ability to attend uh, the dfc court hearing which would obviously dis, um be a, a total waste of the you know it's a it's a key witness i mean he's even listed as a as a defendant uh, as a, as one of the defendants uh, in the case uh, yes, so we just well, felt it, it important. Absolutely. To, yeah, yeah. Well, well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, and, and that actually raises the matter that I was going to ask you about witnesses. You, you've actually said in your pre-trial uh, checklist, um, which witnesses, in fact, do you intend to call? Um, you've got Melvin Stanley Paracat, his father, Stanley Joseph Paracatu. Do I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Um, and you've also included the defendant in your list of witnesses to call. You you don't mean that, surely. Sorry, that's an error. I'm, I'm sorry, absolutely, yeah, it's an error. Now, but I do yeah. apologise. Well, don't, well, don't don't worry because um, Miss Hashmi in the in the um, pre-trial checklist she prepared um, said that she intended to call Melvin. Stanley Parakeet, who's the claimant. <laughs> so I think there's a measure of confusion yeah. or error yeah. on both sides there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, Miss um, Hashmi, um, what is the position with regard to witness evidence? Are, are you in a position to call Mr. Shahab? Your Honor, right now there is no, uh, no witness statement, no witness call is necessarily required in this case because now the situation is altogether different because of the subsequent, you know, uh, uh, situation. So now question is like main issue is 
ask about the share, shares value, valuation of the share, which is he is much concerned. So there are there are other claims against Mr. Shahab, though, of course. Personally, I mean, they they are claims which Mr. Whitehead will know, and are not again make prejudging anything. But uh, there is a claim for return of the investment, which I understand was money provided on behalf of the claimant by his father to acquire the shares. That's a very difficult claim um, in law, uh, and it is inconsistent with a claim for um, Mr. Shahab to purchase the shares. He can't have both, yeah. Mr. Whitehead. You obviously appreciate <laughs> yes of course yes appreciate yeah. that so yes. so uh, it, it seems to me um that the as you said things have changed so dramatically uh in relation to the foundation of this claim and the defense of this claim that um you two and the parties need to get together to bring it to a satisfactory conclusion. Now, it's not for me to say what that conclusion is or should be, but you each recognize, I'm sure, the very considerable difficulties that the present circumstances present for both of your positions. And therefore, I am going to direct, unless you can persuade me to the contrary, at least in the first instant, instance that you engage together, face to face, by a fixed date or on a fixed date, um, in an effort to resolve this matter, I can make directions about ADR, mediation. Um, I, I can do all of that, but it seems to me that the first step would be for you two to confer and see can you reach some sort of accommodation uh, to bring these proceedings to a satisfactory conclusion without wasting the court's time. I I I uh, I am in full support of that, Your Honour. Yeah. Miss Miss Hashmi, um, do I have to? make a direction that you shall do x y and z Your or honor is the best person you know so yeah i agree whatever your honor will direct i will well I, 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 I'm, what i what i think i i will do in the most effective and efficient course is to make a simple direction that you both engage face to face with your clients uh, either to hand or on the end of a telephone um, in an effort to um, resolve these proceedings uh, without further ado. Um, and you will have arguments, uh, of course, about I what I will call ancillary matters, but you should strive uh, to resolve those, remembering uh, throughout um, the word futility. Yeah on both sides. Um, in many cases where a business goes wrong, parties uh, do find themselves in a situation where they simply have to drop hands and walk away and bear their losses. That is unfortunately one of the risks of enterprise. So I shall... Um, Direct that you meet. Do you want me to fix a day, or uh, are you willing to remain on the line? I will. Um, I will withdraw, and you can arrange to meet uh, with your clients. You may need to consult your clients, um, but I'm talking about in the next week. So that if the case can be resolved, the case will be vacated from the list. Um, uh, and uh, judicial time and court time can be saved. So where are we? We are, it's now the um, 6th of November. Um, should I simply say that a direct that you meet before the 13th of November? 
Your Honor, yeah. if, if we could, I, I do apologise and I appreciate your mm. indulgence, but next week might be relatively tough. If we could perhaps um, request till the 20th, so the, the following Wednesday, just to give... Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, I, I understand why it might be tough next week as, uh, yeah. uh, uh, because of events occurring in Dubai. Ms. Hashmi, are you content with that? It will give you time to discuss matters with your client and to um, meet together early in the week after next. Uh, he's suggesting 28th November. No, so I'm before. Be, 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 Ms. Ms. Hashmi, before. Before 20th, 20th November. Yeah. Okay. So I think, we we'll just check our diary. I think we could probably do... Um, the 18th, or the Monday the 18th, if that works with you. November? Yes. Uh, sure, no problem. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that makes it very easy for me to direct that the parties shall meet on the 18th of November 2024 in order to discuss um, resolution of the claims presently before the court. And I will add that you report back to the court uh, immediately after the meeting um, as to what is occur what is to happen. Um, if the matter has to be listed before me again, um, it will be listed on very short notice for a further pretrial review, but I hope very much that that will not be necessary and you will have to make yourselves available whenever the case is lift listed if it is not resolved at your meeting on the 18th of November. I hope that's clear to, clear to you both. And yes. uh, ne next time, Ms. Hashmi, you will no doubt allow allow for traffic. <laughs> Highly, yeah, I'm really. It's very embarrassing for me. Man. Don't 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 worry now. Mr. Whitehead was extremely courteous uh, in his uh, accommodation of your difficulty. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. So 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 um. I wish the parties well in their discussions on the 18th of November, uh, and I'm sure they will recognise the reality of the situation in which they now find themselves. So, so, so officially the matter stands adjourned. The pre-trial pre review, the order that I will make is that the, uh, as I've given already the direction that the parties shall meet on the 18th of November, and that the pre-trial review is adjourned to a date to be fixed if necessary. Yes. Very well. Thank good you. Day, good day to you all, and thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.